recording. All right, guys, first time when we turn up to a bench, make sure we give it a quick sanitize. We don't know what's been on there, we're going to do what? What does sanitizing do, Tyson? It's real bacteria. All right, so really it gets rid of all the bacteria. Okay, good. Chopping board, make sure we've got something to secure it. Filleting knife, because we're filleting fish. Rubbish bin. And fish. Okay, so what temperature does that need to be stored at? 40 degrees. Below 40 degrees, but not below. But not below. Not below zero, because we don't, don't want to freeze it. Alright, cool. So, what type of knife is that, everybody? Filleting knife, good on you. Now, if you look at a filleting knife, you can see it bends. That's why we need to use a filleting knife when filleting fish and not a chef's knife that doesn't bend. Although, if, you, if that's all you've got and you're a bit more experienced than you are now, you can still use that. This is designed for filleting, and I'm just about to demonstrate why. So, what we're we looking for when we see this fish. What should it smell of? Fish. Mm. I'd rather fish smell of absolutely nothing. Um, if it smells of anything, it's started to deteriorate, okay? So don't get too giddy about that. If it smells a little bit, don't throw it away. Okay? It's all good. So this I think I think this is a, a ling Okay. So what we need to do is just have a quick Finger check for bind. bind. All right, and then we get the filleting knife, and what we do is cut down to the skin. All right, you could start here, but I'll start back here. Once you're on the skin, that's when the bend helps. Okay, because you can see. You want to leave the skin behind. You don't want to bring any skin off of the flesh because we don't want to eat that. All right, once you get enough to hold it, then hold it. Keep that bend in the knife. All the way down. Don't try and do it all in one, because you won't. You need to keep that skin tight, all right? Okay. In there. Swap ends if you need to. If the, if the skin's like that, it's probably been frozen, which means the skin is a little bit more uh, likely to break. You can always, as well, do it in smaller chunks. All right, skin's off. All right, beautiful. Skin in the bin. Now, at this point, um, this is where we decide how big our fish goujons are going to be. Because that's what we're going to do. Now they're quite thin. That's quite thin, so I'll do that as a demonstration piece. And then we've all got a similar thickness. What I want to do, this fish hasn't. You can see that there, it's a scale. We've got to get rid of them. All right, so that'll be washed in a second. I'll do the goujons first. So evenly, it's always a good, if you're going to, if you've got the same thickness and everything's all good, just start in the middle and just keep halving and you'll get the sizes that you want. Okay? Down the middle. You can use a chef's knife now because we're no longer filleting it or skinning it. Okay. There we go. Can. We can use a blue cloth or we can use this. One's cleaned and washed onto there because when we're crumbing and deep frying food it needs to be what? Dry. Dry. Oil and water do not mix and if they do there's a big spitting activity going on which could potentially burn you. 
So once they're washed, put them on the paper to dry, and there you have basically your uh, fish ready for coating. That will then be uh, correctly stored, which is how, Ty? How will we correctly store this? Glad wrap in a fridge and yeah, the fridge is going to do all that. What else do we need to include? Oh, the date. Date labelling. So the name of the food, the dish that it's in and, and the date that it goes inside the fridge. Alright, and then whoever picks it up can see whether it's able to use it or not.